Arabi Bab. Um, I'm currently a student at Georgetown University studying government and creative writing. And I have been, always been born and raised in Piqua. Um, I'm an alumna of Piqua High School from the class of 2018. I think my first memory with the arts is probably I think it's probably driving around with my family. Um, we we have this tradition of going to Florida every year, so we would have this really, really long road trip. And um, when we were on the road, we had our family song, which was I've Been Working on the Railroad. So we would sing I've Been Working on the Railroad as a family, and there was this one note right at the end, and we would hold it out, and we had a competition to see who could hold the note out the longest. And when I was younger, my dad would always win. And then as I got older and I started to do music with school and um, work on my breath support, I guess is the technical way to say it, um, I started to be able to beat him. And I remember being so, so proud of that. So I think that's probably one of the first memories I have of, of singing and, and being involved in the arts. Sure. Um, well, I started taking private lessons when I was in the fourth grade. Um, I went to a private school, so they didn't have um, private lessons ingrained in my school like a lot of public schools do, where you can just learn music um, as one of your periods throughout the day. So I started doing private trumpet lessons in the fourth grade, so that way when I joined in seventh grade, I would kind of be on the same level as a lot of the other students who were in the band. Um, and then once I got into the junior high, I started doing um, trumpet in the band. I also sang in the choir. And I think one way that I kind of connected it with my academic life and with my personal life was that I would write songs a lot. So I, I've always really loved to write. I would write stories when I was younger. Um, when my little sister was born, I would always write bedtime stories and read them to her. Um, and I think writing songs was a cool way to kind of connect all these different areas of my life. And thinking back on it, they're all under the realm of the arts, but um, it was just so fun to kind of write a song about my mac and cheese <laughs> as I was eating it, or um, you know, write a song about that boy that I really liked, but he didn't like me back. Uh, so I think from a young age, that was something that I always could kind of use as an outlet for whatever emotions I was feeling. And I think throughout my time in school, that was always a really cool and fun opportunity for me to just sit down and whatever emotion I was feeling, I could write a poem about it or just write it on a sticky note, never to be found again. But I think that was always something that kind of connected the arts with my own life and gave me purpose in that way. Sure, um, in high school, I started out in the marching band playing the trumpet and I did that through I think through junior year um, and I ended up stopping with that because I was also in show choir and as time went on I um, got into leadership roles with that and kind of devoted a lot more time to show choir and I think that was a huge source of community for me in high school that was something that I loved so so much um, and then I also uh, did a lot with um, public speaking. So I would give speeches for clubs that I was in and then I also did some speaking competitions. And I think that a lot of the confidence that I had um, that allowed me to do public speaking stemmed from, from singing and, and performing and being in musicals and things where you kind of had to put yourself out there. And so I think music kind of really gave me that inspiration to, to get involved in that way. Um, I can distinctly remember one speaking competition from, from my junior year. Uh, it was the Rotary four-way speech contest, and we had to, to write a speech about something that we wanted to change in the world. And we started at a regional level and then went to a larger competition. And I think that was one of the first times that I had ever done public speaking just for the point of public speaking. Um, and I, I, I remember only getting involved in it because there was a $200 prize at the end and I really wanted a new pair of shoes. But it was a fun opportunity to, to kind of dip my toe in that, in that pool and to be excited by the fear of it, you know? So it, it was scary. I mean, public speaking is scary, especially once you got to larger levels and you were speaking in front of large groups of people. But I think that that's something that really gave me a unique perspective and unique experiences so that when I graduated and had to give a speech in front of 
you know, the entire hundreds and hundreds of people in the, in the audience, um, I was ready for that. I had to give a speech because I was the co-valedictorian. Yeah, de I definitely think that the arts helped me academically um, as well as personally uh, and gave me experiences that, that made me ready to, to take on larger, larger things as I graduated from PICWA and I think they definitely played a huge part in, in where I'm at now. Um, I think that when I think about the arts, I mostly think about the skills that they gave me. Um, I'm not, you know, singing in, in choirs now and I'm not dancing like I did in show choir, um, but those skills are still within me and I still use them a lot. I mean, it's, to this day, it's, it's something that takes a lot of courage and confidence to stand up in front of your class of, you know, hundreds of students who come from unique perspectives and have these amazing backgrounds and have their own opinions and to kind of share yours. And especially being in a place that is so different than Piqua. I mean, DC, politically, personally, everyone has their own unique aura, their own unique vibe, I guess, to use 21st century language. Um, and it's so different than Piqua. So I have a lot of opportunities to kind of offer different perspectives and to come from a different place and bring different ideas uh, to the table. And it's scary to have to stand up and, and present those. But at the same time, I think that the skills that I have to be able to do that definitely come from my musical background and from the background I have in all different forms of the arts. After high school, I, I went to Georgetown University. Um, so that was in the summer of 2018. That's when I first started. And then I'm currently a junior. So when I was in high school, um, I, and junior high, thinking back, um, I was involved a lot in this program called Youth and Government. So we would write um, proposals to change uh, federal and state laws. So it was something that I was super, super excited about. Um, and as I got more and more involved in the program, I was just really inspired and I could take passion from the idea of writing this document and then standing up in front of all of my peers and defending this and defending this idea and kind of having that piece of paper that I wrote on my MacBook Air in 2012, you know, turn into something that could actually change, you know, millions of lives. That was something that was really inspiring to me and I think it really gave me this idea of public policy as a movement for change and as a mechanism for change. And so that was something that really drove me to looking into going to law school one day and becoming an attorney and, you know, using law as a force for good. So that was something that, that drove me to look for schools so that I could study public policy. And um, Georgetown is one of the best schools to study government, so it definitely appeared on my radar pretty early on. And then after I visited, uh, I just fell in love with it. It was awesome. It was so close to the city and so close to all of these politicians and these people I'd been reading about in the news for years, but never thought that I would actually have a chance to see. And I think now, especially with so much happening in Washington, D.C., it's such an amazing and unique opportunity to be able to actually be there. You know, and to watch as the windows on my building are being boarded up and, you know, to see the protests from my window. It's, it's just a crazy and unique time for sure in our nation's history. Whew, that is a great question. I think that a lot of my support comes from my family. I definitely could not be where I am without them. Um, and I think in a way that I have recently discovered to be pretty unique. A lot of my support comes from my friends, um, from my friends from high school and the friends that I made a lot, a lot of them through show choir. Um, I think that a lot of times when people leave the state to go to college, they end up just cutting ties completely with their hometown friends. And I think that going to school in a totally different area um, where most of the students come from different places, I've noticed that it's pretty rare for people to still be connected with their home communities. So I think the fact that I still am connected with my home communities, the fact that I can come home and, and see my high school friends and it just feels so natural and like we never left, um, that's something that is rare and that definitely provides me with a lot of support. Sure, um, 
Well, my mother is, um, her name is Maria Buff, so she is a business executive. She works for Crown, um, which is a company that um, provides a lot of the big um, construction equipment to construction sites. Um, but she more works with codes, so computer codes and overseeing the creation and development of those codes. Um, and then my dad, his name is Bradley Buff and he is an architect. Yes, um, I definitely was really busy in high school. Um, and at the time it felt all over the place and like I was involved in totally different things. But looking back on it, they def I, I, my passions were a lot more streamlined than I was able to see at the time. But I think my parents were extremely supportive, more supportive than than I ever gave them credit for at the time. Um, and I think that the fact that they were both involved in music in high school um, came as a huge asset to me because not only could they help me when I would ever run into little issues when I was playing trumpet and I just wanted to give up or even me the right chapstick when my lips were bleeding and broken, um, but they also just, they understood. I mean, they understood what it felt like to be so, so excited by something and to really want to give your time to it. And so they were supportive of me and they let me get involved in those things. And I mean, a lot of times it looked as if it might not have been the smartest idea for me to be involved in things. I mean, I remember when I was a junior and we were allowed to take our first AP courses, um, I was called down to the principal's office and I got in trouble because we were only supposed to sign up for two APs and I signed up for five and the principal said, or it might have been my guidance counselor, I'm not sure now, but they said, you know, Darby, this isn't smart to do if you're also involved in extracurriculars and, you know, my parents just trusted in me and they understood that I was passionate about different things and that I would give them the time that they needed um, each of these passions to really devote myself to them and they understood that I knew myself and knew my boundaries and they let me do it and here I am. I think when I go to community arts events, um, the feelings that I take away definitely are dependent on where the event is located. So when I was in high school and I went to community arts events in Piqua, I definitely left with the sense of family and the sense of community and the sense of support. Um, I remember going to things in high school and we would have a show choir competition, for example, or some sort of performance at the high school. And afterwards, it was just this understood tradition where you would walk outside of the stage and just in the hallway, all of the families would be lined up with flowers um, and they'd wanna take pictures with you and everyone would run up and give you a hug, which seems very strange and foreign and coronavirus times, but, um, but yeah, it was just this huge wave of support, like this physical force that you would feel of a hundred people running at you to, to tell you that they loved what you did and they thought that your facials were better than last time and you know, they would, they would remember you and you know, they were your family, even if they were a family member of someone else who you barely really knew, they were always there every step along the way to support you. And I think um, it's a little bit different in DC, not in a bad way, just in a, in a different way. I think it's less of a sense of community, but more of a sense of opportunity. Um, I think as my area grew, um, my community expanded from, you know, 22,000 people, I think is the population of Piqua, something around there, uh, to, you know, thousands and thousands of people and this huge space that is constantly changing. But at the same time, there still is a sense of community um, and it's kind of the people that I would come to the concert with. I mean, I remember going to a Panic at the Disco concert. That was my first outing of freshman year. And um, I went with this group of like seven other girls and we all at the end, everyone was leaving and we all stood together and took a big photo and it was so embarrassing and cheesy. But you know, that was a sense of community right there. And at the same time, watching this concert with thousands of people and seeing that everyone was coming from their own distinct lives and it just filled me with a sense of opportunity and this sense of, wow, my future could be anything I want it to be. You know, I could, 
in my lifetime, I could never meet every single person in this stadium, but I could try my, my darndest, you know, and I could try my darndest to be as successful as I want to be. And I think when you go to things like that and you see one person or a hundred people kind of performing and showing a piece of themselves they've been working on, it's really inspiring because it shows that there's nothing holding you back from devoting yourself to yourself and to something that you're passionate about. So I think that's a huge takeaway that I always have going to community arts events. When you're talking about value, you can either talk about it in a negative or a positive way. So if something has positive value, then it's creating something that is of use. And if something has value that can be seen as negative, then it's, you know, I would be lesser than I am now if I didn't have that thing. And I think for my life, I could definitely see the arts as having both positive and negative value um, because you know, I can see the positive value that they gave me. And then I could also say, I wouldn't be who I am without the arts, but that's not true for everyone. There are some people who never became involved in the arts. And so that wouldn't be a true statement for them. So I think instead I would say the arts provide a huge deal of positive value. Um, and they might not have negative value for everyone, but I know that for me, the arts kind of instilled within me this sense of creativity. Um, and I think creativity is an essential building block to improvements and to change and to advancement in any given field. I mean, you could be a mathematician who is so separated from the arts in any way, shape or form, and that could still influence your decisions. It could still lead you to, you know, try to throw in a division sign where there was previously a multiplication sign. I don't know much about the arts, or about the <laughs> math. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know much about math, but, um, but yeah, I think that anyone could benefit from the arts. That's not to say that someone is lesser than because they didn't have the arts in their lives. But I know that for me, um, the arts really gave me an opportunity to embrace my creativity. And that's something that I see playing out in positive ways in my life every single day. I mean, even the decision to go to a coffee shop and get a new flavor of syrup, it's something that's inspired by creativity. And I know that in professional settings, creativity is really something that sets you apart. So I definitely see worth from the arts in that capacity. And in the same way, I know in my personal life, um, being a part of a musical or being a part of um, some sort of performance driven event where I had to stand up in front of a huge crowd of people and sing a song or do a dance or whatever it may be. It's something that was scary, but it's something that came at such an essential point in my life where I was really finding out who I was as a person. And so forcing myself to do those things and finding the joy from being in a public setting and performing in some way really gave me a lot of confidence that I used later in my life. Um, with public speaking and um, with performing in all shapes and kinds. I mean, I think that performing is something that we associate a lot with the arts, but it's really something that's ever present in every field. So definitely there shouldn't be a stigma around the arts as something that's not professional or that's not, um, I don't know, useful, I think is what some people kind of see it to be, but that's definitely not true. There's so much positive value in the arts. <laughs> I think for some people, a world without the arts would be the same, but I think for a lot of people, a world without the arts would be a world without as much enjoyment, a world without as much community, um, in some ways, a world without as much happiness, um, a world without as much creativity, um, without as much challenge, without as much family, I guess is a good word for it. I think that the arts, it's something that pushes you and challenges you and it really sometimes takes you out of your comfort zone uh, and it's expressing a piece of yourself that is just innately personal you know it's it's you when you whatever no matter what form of of art you're 
exploring and expressing yourself with. Like that is you. So I think without that, it's, it's definitely a world that's harder to connect with others. I definitely think that the arts encourage me to take risks. I think sometimes they force me to take risks. I mean, I definitely think there were some times when I was in high school and I was terrified of going out and doing something and embarrassing myself, but you know, that push is definitely what I needed to succeed in that way. And it definitely encouraged me later on in my life to give myself that push, you know, and to, to really look at my life and think, what is the thing that challenges me the most, but that will give me the best result afterwards? Oh, that's a great question. I think success is something that I have struggled to define for myself for a while. And it's something that is so important for everyone to, to understand about their own life. And it's definitely something that I, that I think about quite seriously. Um, I think for me, Success is understanding who I am completely um, without any tricks or gimmicks and being satisfied that I have achieved the best that I possibly can and that I haven't sacrificed any anything for out of out of fear or out of nervousness or or lack of, of effort um, or procrastination. That's a good one for me. <laughs> um, so I think putting it in more specific terms, uh, I definitely see myself going to law school. Um, I've always really wanted to study constitutional law, but I think since coming to Georgetown, I've been really interested in educational inequalities. So that's definitely something that I would consider studying. Um, and I think something that's always been really, really important to me is that I've always really wanted to finish a novel. Um, I think I've always kind of said, oh, well, if I ever wanna go into a career in politics, then, oh, I, I can't write a novel, I can't publish a novel because then, you know, that's, that's my identity and then that could change how people see me and, oh, I, there's no need to write a novel because one day I'll have kids and then they can read this strange novel their mother wrote about tomato soup. I, I don't know what my novel would be about, but, um, you know, I, I've constantly come up with these excuses um, for why that's not what I would be doing. But, you know, even if I don't publish it, I think it's just important. It's something that I want to do in my life that when I, on my deathbed, I can say that I finished a novel. So I think that's something that is really important in, in my future success. And I've definitely tried to move toward that at Georgetown. I mean, this past semester I took an advanced fiction writing class where we basically started our novels. So we wrote, I think it was somewhere around six chapters, 10,000 words, whatever that equates to, um, of, our, of our novel. So it was an interesting challenge. Um, <laughs> I definitely ran into some, some roadblocks, some, some writer's block as they say, but it was it was a really fun experience and it definitely reaffirmed that that's one of the goals I have for myself. I think if I were to give advice to anyone um, about how to live your life and how to, to get the most out of your life, my number one piece of advice is to read. Um, I think that's something that has really changed the way that I think about the world, the way that I think about myself, um, the way that I think about what I'm doing and what I'm working for. Um, and I think it also just allows you to understand your own beliefs. Um, and that could be reading William Shakespeare and, you know, um, Hemingway and all of these fantastic uh, literary masterpieces, or it could just be reading a magazine on the train to work. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything spectacular and you're not reading for someone else. You're just reading what you enjoy um, in your own life. I mean, I know that I've read some, some books that are <laughs> truly ridiculously terrible, but I think that it's just so important um, and it just creates such a different outlook that you can apply to your life. And I think it, it really, 
increases your ability to be articulate, to express yourself. Um, I know that the fact that I love writing definitely stems from the fact that I love reading. Um, and I think the same is true in other facets of the arts. So if you're someone who really loves singing, then listen. Listen to music, listen to the radio, listen to your friend singing the new Selena Gomez song over and over again. Um, listen to what you like, listen to what you don't like, and apply that to your own life. I think that there are so many people in the world who know what they're passionate about, but it's so important to understand that so many other people in the world share that same passion and you gain so much from collaborating with others and from learning from what other people have done and the mistakes they've made and the accomplishments they've had. So definitely immerse yourself in your passions in all ways possible.